Hello again and welcome back to our course on PowerPoint 2013. In this section we're going to continue looking at the views that are available in PowerPoint 2013. The next view we're going to look at is called Slide Sorter View and even if you've never seen it before you may well be able to guess what we use that for. Note that I'm currently in Outline View. Click on Slide Sorter View and I see the slides sorted into whatever order they are in already. I can easily move slides around so if I click on that slide, the design slide, I can move it before home, I could put view in a different sequence. It's very easy just to drag the slides around to put them into whatever order you want. You can see the numbers there, one, two, three, four, etc., just to tell you the sequence. When we look at Zoom later on, you'll see another little aspect of that that's quite useful. When you're in Slide Sort of View, if you want to be able to just look at one of the slides in more detail, if you double click on it, you go back into either outline view or normal view depending on which one you were last looking at slides in. Now I should point out that if you're in slide sort of view and you have a particular slide selected right click on that you still have options like new slide or duplicate slide. Another useful feature i am currently got the home slide selected if I click on duplicate slide what it does is to make an exact copy of that slide, inserts it after the one I had selected and then I could use that as the starting point for another one of the slides naming three of the groups on a tab of the ribbon. The next view we're going to look at is Notes Page View and in Notes Page View you basically see the slide you can't actually edit the slide in this view but underneath that a placeholder for the notes or indeed the notes you've already typed so if I go back to the first slide using the scroll bar on the right I can see the notes that I've typed about the first slide Notes Page View is a good one for actually entering your speaker notes. You can see the slide on the page and then you've got space to just type in the notes. You may remember much earlier on in the course we talked about the setup of a presentation and the orientation not just of the slides but of various pages and we talked about handouts pages and notes pages. Well this shows you one of the reasons why we chose portrait for some of the artifacts that we produce with a presentation because having this in portrait view is a very convenient way of laying out the notes page even though the slide itself is a landscape slide. And another thing to point out about notes page view is that historically it's very often been the view that a presenter has printed to put by his or her side whilst making a presentation because it gives visual access to the notes and also at the same time they can see exactly what appears on each slide. Now although many people, in fact probably most people, still do things in that way the use of presenter view can greatly aid the process of giving a presentation without the need to have a printed copy of the notes pages. Now presenter view we're going to look at later on when we look at actually giving a slideshow. Now the last one of these views that we're going to look at in this section is reading view and this was newly introduced in the previous version of PowerPoint, PowerPoint 2010 and it's a sort of cut down version of the actual slideshow. When you present a slideshow it actually takes over the screen that you're presenting it on. With reading view it still works within a normal window but it's pretty close to looking at the actual slideshow. Now in this particular presentation, which is set up as a widescreen presentation, we have this letterbox effect because the screen that I'm recording this on is a 4-3 screen. But one advantage of reading view is that you have some simple controls down at the bottom right where you can step through the slideshow as though it were the real slideshow. So you have a previous button and a next button. Click on the next button there and it takes us through the slides and you get a pretty good impression of what the show is actually going to look like. In the middle between those two there is a menu system and if you look at the menu you've got some quite useful options there. One of them is to end the show, that's the bottom one. 
The one up from the bottom is full screen. That takes you effectively to how the slideshow itself would look if it were occupying the whole screen. But then you also have things like edit slides, copy slide, you can zoom in, we'll talk about zoom later. You can also go to a specific slide and f rather than just giving you the numbers of the slides it gives you normally the first line of text if there is text to give you a reminder or a hint about what that slide is. So if I'm looking at this particular presentation in reading view I can say well let me go to the review slide and it takes me to that slide. So that menu system between the previous and next buttons can be very useful. And when I'm developing presentations, I tend to use Reading View as a step just before the one where I run through the real slideshow as a sort of dry run just to have a good view of the visual impact and the logical sequence of the slides in the show. And when I finish using Reading View, down in the bottom right, there are some buttons here to return to the alternative views. That is the icon you'll soon recognize as the one for normal. I'm going to go into slide sort of view which is those sort of four little squiggly rectangles there and there I am back in slide sort of view I've incidentally put the right words on that third slide insert so I've now got details of the insert tab so I've got home insert design review and view tabs and we're now ready for your next exercise in which I'd like you to take what was in example three and on each one of the slides I would like some speaker notes. The speaker notes only have to be a sentence or two and if you say take the design tab maybe just what you see as the purpose of the design tab. If you're not quite sure what it is put in some other text perhaps just say something like what well, the design tab is between the insert tab and the transitions tab but make sure you've got some notes on each of those slides my answer to that exercise is in example 4. In the next section we're going to look at Zoom, so please join me for that.